If you change your mind, you change your life, just change your mind. The Lord loves you. He's standing with his arms wide open. This day's for you Don't you let this opportunity pass by you yeah. oh, Change your mind All right, welcome, welcome everybody to another night of rock um, With, um, I meant to say, <laughs> welcome to the CYM TV with rock uh, but anyway, I am Miko King, your teacher tonight. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and bless you for this night. God, I pray that you would just uh, speak to our hearts concerning sharing the gospel with others. Help us, Holy Spirit, to dig into our word, to dig into our relationship, get to know you better, become best friends if we're not already there, so that we can have an authentic uh, relationship and authentic conversations with people that they may be drawn to you. Um, God, just use us. Holy Spirit, help me to navigate through this, this lesson so that others can leave with better ideas of sharing the gospel or just even with a willingness to do so. We bless you in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so um, our text is coming from 2 Corinthians and there's another letter from Paul. Now, the last time, um, I taught Sunday school, we were talking about um, a letter Paul wrote, you know, and he's still trying to get the Corinthians together, get them to be on one accord, you know, and that's exactly what we still need. We still need to be on one accord and not just Corinthians, but we as the, the body of Christ now need to be on one accord. And, you know, the great commission is that, that, that thing, you know, we're, we're supposed to be uh, creating disciples and how can we create disciples if we're not sharing the gospel of Christ? Right. So, um, that's what we're going to look at tonight. And, uh, you know, so come, come join me in the word. We're going to look at 2 Corinthians 4, 6 through 7. And it says, for God who said, let there be light in the darkness has made this light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. When I read that, I had to sit back. And just like, whoa, let me read that again. So I'm going to read it again. It says, for God who said, let there be light in the darkness. Let's pause right there. What is this light? If you think about it, like light has so much power, right? Think about, you know, getting up in the middle of the night and no night lights, just, you know, pitch dark. Even if you know the room, if somebody didn't pick up a toy, you're going to trip over it, right? So light reveals, light creates a path. And it's saying here, let there be light in the darkness. There's darkness all around us. And darkness is like a void of understanding. It's just, it's just yeah, I, void. Um, but light brings that revelation. Light, light brings knowledge. And it's saying, um, God has made this light shine in our hearts. So this, this light is now within us. Oh, man. Do y'all remember that? Um, oh, the song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Yeah, so, and there's a part in that song that says, hide it under a bushel. No, <laughs> you know, but that's what we're doing. Hiding it under a bushel. You're, you don't want anybody to know that you got this light. You know, you got this bright, brilliant power within you. God himself resides, <laughs> you know, and we are hiding it under a bushel a bushel of shame, a bushel of fear, a bushel of rejection. I don't know what your, your reason um, for not sharing the gospel is, but here it's saying it's in our hearts 
so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Christ. Y'all. And it's like, oh my God, I'm smiling now. But when I first read that, I was not smiling. And let me tell you why. It's because I had I it it brought back to my remembrance how I was when I first got saved. Listen, when I first got saved at 15 years old, <laughs> listen, I was like, Mom, guess what I did? <laughs> I got saved today because my mama didn't go at this time in my life, my mom was no longer in the church. And um you know, so I came home and I was like, my, I got saved today. You know, she's like, what you mean? <laughs> what I said, I got saved. I accepted Jesus in my heart. I thought she was already saved. You know, well, true enough, at six and nine and some other time, I did say I'm accepting Jesus into my heart. But this time, it was not just a head thing. It was a heart thing. You know, I accepted him in the what I knew growing up here. But more importantly, I accept it in my heart where now I have a relationship with him and his priority. You know, so I was getting up in the mornings. I was reading my Bible. I was praying. You know, I was fasting every Wednesday. You know, all these things because I wanted a deeper relationship with God. You know, so when I went to school, when I went wherever I was going, I'm looking for an opportunity to share God's gospel. Let me tell you about Jesus. Listen, y'all see the smile? Yeah, it's a reason for that. I'm in love with a man. <laughs> and that man's name is Jesus. Let me tell you what he did for me. You know, I was that kid, right? Um, I don't recall getting picked on because I had that relationship or because I talked about it so much. What I do recall is that, Miko going with that, I don't want to hear that. You know? Um, and I remember going to college, you know, there were things that I experienced that I didn't have an experience before. So I enjoyed some of that, you know, but at the end of the day, I'm still trying to figure out if you say, <laughs> you know, Jesus, you know, evangelist at the heart from the jump, <laughs> you know, I was really just trying to, trying to tell everybody, you go tell everybody. Yes, I was trying to tell everybody about this man named Jesus. And so when I read the scripture, I was like, what happened to her? Because that ain't the case no more. I might think it, but my actions, that thought, it just kind of goes from one side to the other and then it's gone away. It never becomes an action. Now, and that's going to change, right? Because each, I can't be each one reach two if I'm not opening my mouth, right? If I'm not sharing. And a lot of times, don't, don't get, don't get it. Don't get me wrong. A lot of times we don't necessarily have to open our mouth to share Jesus because what people really want to see is do you look like him? You know, I think it was Gandhi who said, um, I like I like your Jesus, but I don't like the Christians. Yeah, so now I'm thinking, okay, because even I, and just a transparent moment right here, you know, I have teenage boys well, one is a man now, 21, and I have a 15-year-old. If they were given the option of going to church, the answer would be no. And sometimes I had to look at myself. You know, I'm like, okay, did I show them Jesus at home? You know, how much of what I represented is a factor in their decision? Now, I'm not taking responsibility for their actions, <laughs> but what I am saying is that sometimes I, we can be a deterrent to people and whether or not they want to be in relationship with Jesus. Because just like Gandhi said, I've read the Bible, I've studied your Jesus, and I love him. But his people don't do what he say. You know, that kind of thing. So I'm um, just remembering that we are light, okay? So we're light and we're vessels. Because the next scripture says, we now have this light shining in our hearts but we ourselves are like flat, fragile clay jars containing a great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. And that's why I said, you know, I ain't going to take a whole responsibility for my boys not wanting to be involved. But I will say, is my light, is my light bright enough that it creates a path for them? Am I sharing? Um, 
the gospel that I know, the gospel, or am I just sharing life experiences without Christ? You know what I'm saying? Like they need to see me respond in a way, in God's way, you know, even if it's not, even if I'm growing into a more consistent way of responding God's way, you understand? I hope that that makes sense. But anyway, um, our light is our life. Our light, like the way we live shows our love for Jesus. I hope that makes sense. But anyway, let's get into it. So Paul is trying to tell these people, like, li listen, the whole goal is that we spread the gospel. How are we going to spread this gospel if y'all still arguing and complaining and bickering against um, amongst yourselves? Okay, so my question for you is what are some of the ways you can share the good news with others? You know, um, Let's start in our homes. What are some ways that we as families can share the good news with others? You know, who I can tell I'm growing, Ma, because today in class, <laughs> we had a pop quiz and I was not expecting it, right? So I asked God to bring it back to my remembrance and he did. That's sharing the gospel. What, what are you doing? How are you responding like Jesus? You know, and 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 developing close relationships with your family. Guys, how many of you, and I don't know, maybe it's just me, but when I go to restaurants sometimes, and I especially used to do this when I was younger, but, you know, I would watch how families interact with each other. You know, and when I saw a family that was, you know, there was a lot of communication, you know, they were smiling, laughing, and all that, things like that, I would go and ask. I would go and say, you know, I just enjoy watching y'all today. Kind of weird, I know, but that's how I am. So <laughs> I just call myself weird on TV. <laughs> anyway, but um, I am. Uh, but anyway, so I would go and I'll say, hey, I just wanted you to know that it was just such a pleasure to watch you guys interact tonight. You know, and that their, their light attracted me. Now, not all families that do that love Jesus and the gospel is the reason they are like that, you know, but there are some, you know, who are like that. And that's a, that's an open door for them to now share with me. Hey, you know, this is, we believe, you know, love God, love his people. You know, I don't know. It's ways that you can get in the door, you know, um, sharing life experiences with people. Some people go through the exact same things that we do and they see us handle it differently. And that's attractive. Like, how did you do that? How are you divorced and still talking? Okay, I'm supposed to be talking to the kids. My bad. They won't be divorced at six to nine years old. <laughs> why didn't you, <clears throat> when he talked about your mama, why didn't you say anything back? You know? So you share because I don't, I don't, I don't repay evil with evil. I repay evil with good. You know, um, what are some other ways? Why are you afraid to share? You know, I think I shared um, some of the reasons I've been afraid is one, rejection. And then the second reason is because I was like, eh, does my life look like I follow Christ? Sometimes it don't. And I don't want to share. You know, I want God to be like Ichabod. <laughs> That's for the adults, kids. Y'all probably didn't get that. What's she talking about? Um, but anyway, so <laughs> just know that, excuse me, um, your life, your life, the way you respond is the greatest example, right? You know, that's attractive in and of itself, especially when we respond the way he has has written, the way it's in the word, you know, because sometimes the way God tells us to handle things is not the norm. A lot of times it's not the norm, you know, um, and so that and that's OK, because we're supposed to be different. We're supposed to be a peculiar people. Right. Um, so, Paul, you know, he talks about we've gone from, you know, just getting it right all the time. Let me let me read what you what he wrote. 
Paul wrote, because we have been shown mercy, we have the ministry of the gospel and we must not give up. We can't give up, even if they reject us, even if they talk about us, we can't give up. We must tell others, Satan tries to stop people from seeing the light of Christ, who is the image of God. We proclaim Jesus as Lord. We are only servants for him. God has said, let light shine from darkness and show our hearts the light of, the, of God's glory through Jesus, okay? Paul then tells us that we have a special treasure. We have a treasure in Clay Jars, y'all. We're, 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 some of us, you know, these Clay Jars have been through the roof and that's okay. The treasure still is valuable. All right. Um, the treasure we have is the knowledge of God through Christ through Jesus and the gospel. We have this treasure because of the new covenant. Paul understood that following Jesus could be hard. So he, he reminded everybody, following Jesus can be hard. Doing it God's way can be hard, but it's not, just because it's hard doesn't mean it's impossible, right? A lot of y'all play sports, um, um, maybe, um, not just sports, but you, you maybe draw in art or in drama. Um, and all of those are skills, skills that you had to practice to get better at. Even if you started out, some people have natural abilities. You may have started out fast, but there's still a technique to it. And once you learn that technique, you practice it. And as you practice, you got better. The same thing is true in our relationship, in our sharing. The more we practice, the better we get at it, okay? Practice doing it God's way. Oh, man, I was going, I was not going to say that. I was not going to repay you for you, but that doggone, she got the best. I, I wanted her to know how I really felt. And so I said what I said, and now, oh, God, forgive me. Okay, all right, because he's faithful and he's just, so he will forgive you. And that's the thing about this new covenant. It's grace and forgiveness. Now, that's not to say you go out there and do whatever you want to do. No, but understand that Christ, the gospel, Christ dying on the cross covered that too. So just continue to continue to go after, after God. Lord, I want to do it your way. Holy Spirit, help me to respond in a way that's pleasing to you. Help me to respond in a way that gives God glory. Because right now, whoo. Who oh, I don't think I'm gonna do that. So Lord, help me. Okay. Sometimes the prayer don't, it don't have to be long. God help me. Holy Spirit help me. Holy Spirit guide me. Holy Spirit comfort me. Whatever the thing is, because a lot of times with with pain and hurt and disappointment, we respond out of our emotion, and then um, you know we ended up end up not giving God's giving God His due glory. Okay. Um, so Paul understood that following Jesus could be hard. So he reminded everyone we are afflicted, which means hurt, but not crushed. We are perplexed, may not understand what's going on, but we're not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. We're not left alone. <laughs> understand that God is always with us. Um, we are struck down, but we are not destroyed. So I don't know, you know, like I said, those, those treasures, jars of clay they are breakable right we are human beings we still feel guys so just because you're a christian don't mean things are not going to hurt don't mean that you know when when the teacher called you out for talking when it was actually the boy sitting behind you it doesn't mean that you're not going to get angry but our response should be different after a while and it, it does not happen overnight you know, Lord, help me to respond. Yes, ma'am. That wasn't me, <laughs> you know, but yes, ma'am. I hear what you're saying. Okay. Um, but anyway, he says we can endure suffering because we know that others will come to know Jesus. And one day we will be resurrected with God. 
So do not give up. We do not focus on temporary earthly things. We can see our focus is on what is unseen because that is eternal. That is God and the Holy Spirit guiding us through life. So Paul understood that believers should be focused. We're, we have a focus here in back to him what it is. To build a people of God who aggressively pursue life by following the example of Christ, the leading of the Holy Spirit, and ultimately the demonstration of his word so that we can present a kingdom to our father. Y'all, that is it. That is what we are here to do, right? Like, come on and share this good gospel because we got a whole kingdom to present to God. Like, Lord, we was down here working. We used our gifts. We used our life to be light in this darkness. We shared our relationship with you, with others. That's how we're presenting here, right? Because we're sharing the truth of Jesus with others. Um, and so I just had, excuse me, a couple more questions. Um, we share, we share our Jesus. So just a couple questions to, to, for you to ponder. One, what keeps us, it's kind of like the five W's and the H. <laughs> so it's like, what keeps us from sharing? I know I talked about for me, it's rejection and it's also my life not being as great as I think it should be. Like, I feel like I'm not bearing good witness, you know, but I'm judging myself. Stop that. That's what grace is for. Okay, so you've, your relationship with God is not where it used to be. Okay, so what are you going to do to, to, to change that? What are you going to, who are you going to become so that your relationship with him is better? You know, what practices are you going to put in place to strengthen that relationship? And so that's, that's what I'm, I'm focusing on right now. You know, I'm getting up again at 530 in the morning so that I can have time with God by myself. You know, how do we do it? Yeah, we just live. We share by our life. Our, what? Let me get my quote. Hold on. Oh, my goodness. Our life shows our love for God. The way we live will show our love for Jesus. The way we live will show our love for Jesus. And that, that, that's, that attracts people. You know, um, why don't we do it? We kind of talked about that too. You know, fear, shame, not sure how we're going to be received. Um, I don't know. What are some reasons you don't share? When should we do it? All the time. Where? Everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's what we say. It's a lifestyle. Each one reach two is a lifestyle. And this is what we're talking about. Okay. I don't know how long I've gone, but um, that is actually all I have. So um, please, again, share in the comments, you know, how, how will you share? Who will you reach out to this week to share the love of God, to, to share your passion, to share your life, you know, um, with God? Who can you share that with? Okay, so Romans, for those of you who are listening and you may not have um, a relationship with God, I invite you now to come on board, <laughs> to come on, join in on this good. Because <laughs> we, have, we have such a, a great and awesome gift that's given to us once we accept um, Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and that is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you, the Holy Spirit will prepare you for life, right? Uh, he's a comforter. He's a teacher. And he will give you instructions. And actually, um, when, you, when you get yourself still and get familiar with his voice, you'll, you'll start. You'll know about things before they happen sometimes. Sometimes he'll give you a glimpse of something that's coming so that you can prepare and be at peace when it shows up. 
that's happened so many times. Even now, you know, it's happening. Um, and I thank God for it. So if you want to accept Christ tonight, pray this with me. Say, God, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. And because of this, I am saved. Holy Spirit, I welcome you in. Teach me and show me your ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank y'all so much for joining. I hope that you got something. I am looking forward to hearing your comments and the ways that you are sharing, things that are keeping you from sharing, whatever um, you would like to share with us. Put them below in the comments. And we'll see you next time. Peace.